Hey, what's up online? What's up online community? And thanks for stopping by checking out another Saving the Straight No Chance. Now, first off, I've got to say that um, I know I've been gone for some time. Um, I want to give a, a, a shout out and a, a special warm felt thank you to everybody that's messaged me, that's reached out, um, that has stopped by to check on me and my health and my well being. As you can see, I'm back, I'm black, and I'm stronger than ever. Um, last time I was on online on the on the airways, um, I didn't have the facial hair. Look, I even grew the goatee back because I was walking around looking like Ken Brown with the uh, <laughs> with, with the slippery with the with the slippery slippery criminal right. face, no facial hair. Um, but I even grew the goatee back. So you know, shout out to everybody that checked in on me. You know, checked in on my health. I'm feeling great. I'm doing great. I'm, I'm energized. I'm enthused. I'm ready to talk some sports. I'm ready to get down with my man Ken. I know that because of the hiatus, I've been gone for a month. Um, this, this, this segment, I wanted to kind of take it back to the roots and that is talking to, you know, one of my guys who's there, A1 from day one, helping me build this platform, talking sports and culture, uh, Kim Brown. So first off, Kim Brown, thanks for uh, jumping on Straight No Chaser. Hey brother, thanks for uh, having me back, man. It's been too long. I'm glad to see, man, you're doing well. Uh, we definitely missed the segments, man. So glad to have you back once again, man, so we can, we can jump into it and, and, and get it popping. Man, you know how we do. So before we get into it, people at home, if you're watching, grab your favorite libation. Today we're talking sports and we're going to get into a straight note chaser. Salute. Mm. Yes, sir. This is the thing is I'm starting to hear people clamor for Nick for uh, Mitchell Trubisky. Wow. Wow. It's a thing. What do you think? Yeah. About, I, I call him the Bisco. Mama named the Bisco. <laughs> I call him the Bisco. <laughs> Mitchell Trubisky is back on the center. Oh man, he's been much maligned, man, throughout his whole career. Um, and I don't know if the switch to Foles was just to give that offense um, a different look or um, some extra punts, um, but it's not working. I just think a combination of the play calling, um, the old line is struggling. Um, you know, the Bears typically have never had a prolific type of offense. Um, but like you said, man, in this league, you got to be able to score and you got to be able to score multiple ways. So I don't think they're consistent enough in the run game. Uh, they're inconsistent in their passing game. Uh, for them to be sitting on only one loss at, at this point in the season, man, um, I got to give a credit to that defense. The defense has pr pretty much been keeping them in games and, 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 you know, getting them some wins through that defense. But they want to go deep in the playoffs, man. They're going to have to figure it off on off, figure it out on offense, and and Nagy's going to have to come up with with uh, a little bit more variety as far as the play calling, man, because the play calling right now uh, is definitely lacking. Absolutely. You know, um, real quick, let me jump to a couple comments we have. So shout out Dennis Sibbitt. I know he's a guy who's always tuning in, checking us out. He's got a lot of always got a lot of great feedback, a lot of great comments. So Dennis Sibbitt has mentioned Eric Dickerson has said that the, the line isn't doing anything for, for Zeke in the run game down in Dallas. Um, I do know that the, the, the Cowboys are missing what three guys now. They miss Tyron yes. Smith, Collins, and I think another guy at least. Mm -hmm. You know, they're down to the second and third string guys in the position. Yes. But depth is one of the things that you sacrifice when you pay everybody. Right. You know, Dallas had a nice young core, which is great when you grow and develop that group together, but you also had to pay that group. Right. And now that everyone's paid, also everyone's hurt. So that hurts their ability, the ability to go out and make a move to get a difference maker at an offense position to lack up, to pick up for some of the lack of depth uh, due to injury. Right. Um, let's see, Dennis Sibbitt also, this is something that's come up many, many times and that is ownership with the McCaskies. You know, the McCaskies are one of the few teams, I think there might be the only one, if not, there might be one more um, football team that is still family owned. Mm -hmm. I can tell you right now, that is not going to happen. That is some, that is an investment. That is what we call generational wealth. Mm -hmm. That is something that the Chicago Bear brand, Chicago Bear football, the McCaskey name in and of itself as a brand, that is not going to happen. I don't foresee that happening anytime soon. There's been talk about uh, the McCaskey selling the team or getting an own, a different owner. Um, for years now, um, at least for the last 15, 20 years. I don't see that happening, but Dennis Sibbitt, you hit it right on point. You know, that's something that's, that's been talked about. But again, I don't know if the McCaskies, because the McCaskies have, have paid money. Yes. 
they just hired some of the wrong people mm. and paid some of the wrong people. Case in point, the year that Mitchell Trubisky was drafted, first off, you hired Ryan Pace. You know what? Give the man a shot. He moved up one spot to draft the quarterback who was probably going to be there maybe five, six slots down in the draft. Okay. He moved up to, to and traded assets, a couple second rounders and the third rounder, I think, to draft Trubisky. But then that same year, they draft, uh, they, they signed Mike Glennon. Two years, <laughs> I think it was 36, 38, 38 million, and benched him after the fourth game. So, you know, the McCaskies will pay, but you have to have the right people in place to make the right decisions. Yes. And the quarterback position is a position that the Bears have not been able to get since, I, I, this is going to sound really crazy, the, the two or three best quarterbacks that I've seen in my lifetime, people don't want to admit it, admit it Jay Cutler, then you've got Eric Kramer. Mm, yeah. Yeah. You know, you can even you can even throw uh the uh the other guy before Kramer. Um Jim Miller, is that his name? And then maybe uh, it may be Jimmy Mann. I, I didn't hear you say Bob Avellini. I, I didn't hear that name uh, <laughs> mentioned at all, or, or Vince Evans. Uh I was I was <laughs> just gonna say it. Uh hey, Page and Steve Fuller, Steve Fuller to, the Bear, to Hallis Hall. Steve Fuller, please report to Hallis Hall. Oh, man. You're My best right memory of, of Steve Fuller as a Bears quarterback is doing the Super Bowl shuffle, bumping in everybody. <laughs> in the park. So that's the Steve Fuller table. You know, right. shout out to my man Steve Fuller. But right. you know, I say all that because you have to steady the, the quarterback position. Mm -hmm. You show me an NFL team that, have, that doesn't have a steady, at least high level game manager that's competing for Super Bowls and championships. You know, you have to get that, you have to get that right. Mm -hmm. And to, to that point, Tina Ward, Tina's been on the show, love Tina. She's Tina. been on the show, she's, yeah. to um, she's like, man, you know what? No, when I, when I mentioned Trubisky coming back under center, she's like, nah, but you know what? <laughs> I, and I said this, we may not have seen the last of Mitch, Mitchell Trubisky, mama named Nabisco, <laughs> I'm gonna call him Nabisco. Uh, we, we may have not have seen the last of Mitch Trubisky. If nothing else, Nick Foles, you know, I don't wish anything on him, but he has a history of being injured and yes. being out a couple games every season. Right. So, um, Dennis Sidman chimed in, uh, Jim Harbaugh. You know, Jim Harbaugh was, was, a, was a decent quarterback, but that's not the quarterback I'm thinking of. It was Jim Miller, Eric Kramer, because I remember they had a quarterback duel. Uh, we've had Jay Cutler. And uh, actually, Jim Jim Harbaugh was more of a of a handed off guy. You know, he could make some plays. He was a, a really good game manager, but he wasn't right. that franchise guy. You know, you no. look at some of the numbers that Eric, Eric Kramer and Jim Miller put up. You know, they put up some pretty good numbers and right. Jim McMahon's leadership. But now you're talking about, you know, most people don't even know who Jim McMahon is, and I don't even yeah. think Jim McMahon knows who he is. <laughs> with all the concussions, so right. 